Hey, what's up guys? So it seems like a common push among gaming mouse companies lately is in the direction that lighter is better. We had so much hype for the final mouse Air 58. We've got the 67 gram Model O releasing soon and we'll talk more about this later in depth, but generally lighter mice are more desirable for competitive shooters up to a certain point. Wireless is also becoming a common goal, especially from Logitech with their new power efficient hero sensor, which conserves battery life immensely while still retaining the best optical sensor performance to date. Typically though, you don't get light and wireless in a gaming mouse uh, in one. And really the only mouse to do this on the market at the moment is Logitech's G Pro Wireless. It does come in at a premium of $150. And of course the narrower, longer shape isn't for everyone. Now, whether that's just too expensive for you or you just don't like the shape for gaming for the G Pro Wireless, we're going to have a look at how you can take the $49 G305 uh, which does come in at 97 grams with the default AA battery and basically bring the weight down to match the G Pro wireless. Now I know that there are going to be plenty of comments down below telling me that weight doesn't matter when it comes to mice and that their 120 gram plus mouse is perfect and that's totally okay. There are some personal preferences when it comes to gaming and peripheral choice, but there are also some objective truths. It's a fact that lighter objects are easier to move than heavier ones and they are also easier to stop. When it comes to gaming mice, this means that lighter mice are potentially better for flicks, quick movement and even small adjustments and can potentially prevent over aiming because the inertia is easier to break. It's also important to state that this is only really relevant for competitive first person shooters where accuracy is critical and where you're typically going to be playing on a very low sensitivity. If you personally play more casual games with a small mouse pad and a higher sensitivity and a heavier mouse, please be a bit more open minded to how this is actually relevant for competitive players. So now a quick review of the G305 before we get this thing to 80 grams. In short, if you're looking for a small wireless gaming mouse without spending a ton of money, the G305 5 is a very solid choice. Like I said, it is quite small. It retains the classic shape of the wide G102, G203, and now G Pro. So it is pretty clear that that is a popular shape. Many have described this shape as perfect for claw grip since it is a shorter mouse. And despite having hands on the larger end, this is my preferred mouse for competitive shooters. The left and right mouse clicks are a bit heavier though for my liking, and I do wish they were light and quiet like the G Pro Wireless. Scroll wheel feels nice though, not too stiff and not too much horizontal play either. You do also have two side buttons on the left of the mouse. Overall, these feel okay too, but I do prefer the easier clicks on the G Pro Wireless. DPI shift button is also right behind the scroll wheel. There's a small LED indicator to indicate which level is active. Some have complained about the grip on the G305, saying it's a little on the slippery end if your palms tend to sweat in game, and I would have to agree. I do prefer the softer matte texture on the G Pro Wireless, or even better, the rubberized texture on the side grips for the G703. One reason the G305 is so affordable though is that Logitech didn't need to integrate a charging circuit or lithium battery built in like they did with the G Pro Wireless as the G305 is powered by a single replaceable AA battery. The battery that comes in the box is a AA Duracell which weighs 23 grams alone and when installed into the G305 this brings the total weight to 97 grams. And by no means is that heavy. Plenty of competitive CSGO players use mice around this weight so this is absolutely fine for competitive gaming. Some would say for even at the highest level. If you do prefer lighter though, a quick way to bring that down to 84 grams is by using a AAA lithium battery and a plastic adapter sleeve that you can get from Amazon. If you can't be bothered with the adapter sleeve, you can also use aluminium or tin foil to close the connection, but that was a bit janky for me personally. So this makes it pretty much the same weight as the Wired G Pro and a little lighter than the Zowie FK2. Now, if you wanna play without the back cover and you somehow find that comfortable, you can reduce the weight further down to 76 grams, but I went ahead and 3D printed this honeycomb shell from Thingiverse, which landed me at 80 grams. The whole print took about six hours and you might want to give it a quick sand afterwards as well to get it nice and smooth like the rest of the mouse. Obviously not everyone has 3D printers, so feel free to send the file to a company like Shapeways or 3D Hubs, and that way they can print it for you for a small fee. So the honeycomb shell doesn't really do much for weight reduction. The big tip here is using that AAA battery with the AA adapter sleeve. Now I want to reiterate that this isn't going to suddenly make your 
your aim god tier. The best way to become better at first person shooters is to play them as much as you can and playing with the intent to actually improve. The point of this video is to show you how you can take the $50 G305 and make it as light as the $150 G Pro Wireless, where weight is one of its main selling points. The end result is an insanely good small wireless gaming mouse for competitive shooters and easily one of the best mice on the market in my opinion. Of course, compared to the G Pro Wireless, there are still some differences with the main one being the shape, but also the texture which is a bit harder on the G305 and the switch is being harder too. You also need to factor in the cost of the batteries over time, but seeing as a single AAA lithium battery will likely give you over a month or two of heavy use, the additional cost isn't that significant. Logitech have really done some magic here with the Hero Sensor in terms of power efficiency. As a comparison, my old G703 uses the 3366 sensor and it barely lasts four days with continuous use. Now, when this sensor is so good at conserving power, you'd have to expect that this is Logitech's game plan for the next year or two. I personally would have no issue if Logitech just took every single shape mouse uh, out there that they had and just incorporated the hero sensor and then a slot for a AA or AAA battery so that it could be powered wirelessly. Having a wireless hero G303 or G903, I think would be personally pretty awesome. And so if you do have the G305 and you wouldn't mind shaving a few grams off it to match the weight, of the G Pro wireless. It's definitely worth it in my opinion, especially that battery swap. And I will leave that uh, honeycomb shell in the description down below if you have a 3D printer or you wanna get it 3D printed by a third party or maybe a friend. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.